water introduction about 3/4 of the earth's surface is covered with water it is found in puddles ponds rivers lakes and oceans it is present under the ground and in glaciers too in the form of ice it is also present in air in the form of water vapor 97.4% of the available water is in seas and oceans which cannot be used directly by us because of its high salt content a lot of fresh water is frozen in glaciers and in the polar ice caps only 0.01% of the water on the earth is available to us for consumption it is only the fresh water that can be used by the living beings nearly 70% of your body weight is water in some plant parts it may even be more water is a universal solvent large variety of substances can be dissolved in it it serves as an important medium for all chemical reactions which take place within the organisms plants need water to prepare their food by the process of photosynthesis water is absorbed by the plant roots it is also needed for growth of plants seeds need water for germination for growing crops a large quantity of water is used for irrigation in the soil water contains dissolved minerals in it these are absorbed by plants along with water mineral absorption water helps to regulate body temperature through evaporation and sweating water is used for drinking and cooking purposes water is used in many industries and is used for generating electricity hydroelectric power sources of water rain water rain is the major source of fresh water on the earth water from the oceans seas lakes rivers and ponds vaporizes in the presence of sunlight and rises upward in the sky water vapor in the sky mixes with the dust particles and sum up to form clouds in the troposphere when these clouds strike with the cold atmospheric air they condense and convert into drops of water and fall on the earth as rain water in the upper troposphere layer rain water is present in pure form but when it passes through lower troposphere it mixes with various atmospheric gases such as carbon dioxide carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen and polluted dust particles various acids are formed during mixing and finally it fall on the earth as rain the first rain in any season is called acid rain because all atmospheric gases and polluted dust particles mixed with rain water in the first rain and fall on the earth as acid acid rain is very harmful for skin and crops ground water some part of rain water flows along with rivers streams lakes as surface water some part exists in the atmosphere as water vapor some part of rain water seeps under the earth surface in the voids of the soil particles and pores of rocks as subsurface water this is called ground water this water is used for drinking purpose and absorbed by plants to make their food rain water is the main source of ground water surface water water present in the oceans seas rivers ponds and other water bodies on the earth is called as surface water among these surface water sources oceans are the largest source of surface water sea and ocean water contain salty water whereas the water of rivers lakes ponds etc is saltness this water is used for irrigation drinking electricity production in hydro power plants and industrial purpose melting of ice and snow in the mountains and the glaciers form water that also mix in the surface water this water is unfit for drinking industrial wastage garbage and sewage from cities are discharged into the water most of the drinking water supplied in towns and villages is from rivers aquatic creatures survive in surface water some part of surface water also seeps beneath the surface as subsurface water iceberg and glaciers in the regions of himalaya and some other mountains water is available in the form of snow and ice 
icebergs and glaciers in the high altitude of the Himalaya are also one of the biggest sources of fresh water. The frozen state of this water exists due to very low temperature in the hilly regions of Himalaya and other mountains in the world. When snow, icebergs and glaciers melt, it converts into water. This water ultimately flows into the river, lakes, etc. as surface water and is used for many purposes by the mankind, animals and plants. Water Cycle The journey of water from the land to the sky and back to land is called water cycle. Atmosphere plays a very important role in the formation of water cycle. The water in oceans, seas, rivers, lakes, ponds and streams evaporates because of the heat of sun. It is the sun's heat that provides energy to evaporate the water from the earth's surface. The water vapour so formed rises up. The air higher up in the atmosphere is cool. This cools the water vapour and it condenses to form water droplets. When clouds meet cold air, they fall on the earth as rain or snow. This process is called precipitation. A part of this may seem down the rocks by the process of infiltration. Some of the filtered water may get trapped between rocks as groundwater. However, most of the water runs down and mixes into the sea. This process is called surface runoff. Heavy rain and no rain, their effects. If it continues raining for hours together without halting, there is an increase in the level of water in the rivers, lakes and ponds. This results into logging of water everywhere. Even the roads are filled up with stagnant water. Land is covered with water everywhere. This condition, caused due to heavy and uninterrupted rain, is termed as flood. Odisha, Bihar, Maharashtra, Assam are the states in India which are frequently affected by flood. On the contrary, if a place receives no or very less rainfall for years together, not even during rainy season, the land, soil and water bodies of that region dry up. This condition is termed as drought. The areas that are frequently affected by drought in India are parts of Rajasthan, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh. The reason behind this condition being the heavy loss in humidity of the air by the time the monsoon winds reach these regions. Effects of Flood Depletion in the quality and quantity of soil. As a result of flood, the top fertile soil wash away. The soil becomes saline which affects the growth of plants in that area. Destruction of crops As a result of flood, the fields get washed away of its crops. This results into shortage of food. Loss of life and property Human beings and animals get drowned in the flood water. Houses collapse, drinking water gets contaminated, epidemics break, which accounts for loss of life and property. Aquatic life is affected. Aquatic plants and animals are washed away with water. They are dumped elsewhere, mostly on the land. This separates them from their habitat which might finally result into their death. Unhygienic condition caused due to flood can lead to spread of waterborne diseases like cholera and typhoid. Scarcity of drinking water may occur as the water gets contaminated. Effects of drought Soil erosion. Due to excessive dryness, the topsoil blow away by the wind. This results into soil erosion. Agriculture. Due to the scarcity of fertile soil, agriculture is adversely affected. This results into shortage of food. Mortality rate increases. Due to shortage of food, human beings die. They do not get enough food to eat. Cattle do not get fodder as a result of which they gradually become weak and die. Yield of milk also decreases due to the poor health of animals, milk giving animals. Effect on aquatic life Due to scarcity of water in water bodies, the aquatic life is also affected. They eventually perish. Hence, it is necessary to have a balanced average rainfall round the year. Conservation of Water Conservation of water means 
the effective use of water. It means not wasting water and also maintaining its quality. Some ways in which water can be conserved are Stop wasting water and recycle wherever possible. Plant trees and other vegetation. This increases the absorption of water by the soil and increases the water table. Reduce water pollution by treating sewage and factory waste before disposing them. Control flooding and store water for use when rain falls by building dams. However, big dams are also used in hydropower plants to generate electricity. By rainwater harvesting, the level of water on the earth's surface has been reduced due to deforestation. Storage of water for later use, conserve the water. Rainwater harvesting Rainwater harvesting is a technique of collection and storage of rainwater into natural reservoirs or tanks. This is one of the best method of conservation of water. One method of rainwater harvesting is rooftop rainwater harvesting. Rooftop rainwater harvesting. The rainwater falling on the roof of a building is allowed to flow either into a storage tank and used for activities such as watering plants, irrigation, garden, etc. Alternately, it is allowed to flow into a deep pit in the ground so that it adds to groundwater.